what's a move that you would take back from the last year? I I'll start because I don't know if this was even in the past year because I think it came in January, but the the offer from the Rangers, like I would take back declining that for JT Miller. I would take that for sure. Um, and then aside from that, I, I you know, it's it's probably the JT Miller contract again, like, you know, extending him on that uh, on the seven years. I think that's, yeah, it hasn't worked out great so far this season. I just wonder what there was like to see on the trade market with a guy who you probably could have gone into this year as well and made an option with him. You probably could have kept Bo. Like there would have been a lot of different things you would have done. I think it's an easy, kind of a really easy decision for me if, if you take back a something from the past year. It's the JT Miller extension. Here's the thing, Chris, is those two things that you just brought up, like the, turning down the Rangers reported package of Heedle, Lundqvist, uh, and a first, turning that down and not extending Miller, those two things go hand in hand, which makes it, in my mind, the surefire choice. But yeah. I'll entertain some other ones because there was a lot of people that replied to this. We put it out on Twitter. Uh, it was the subject of our What Do You Think Thursday article over at CanucksArmy.com. Uh, shout outs to Fon Roger, as always. Um, and I had to remind people that the OEL Garland trade was over a year ago. Because if you look at the last, I don't know, let's say 10 years, that's probably the surefire one is the OEL Garland trade. But when you're looking at the last calendar year, and again, uh, we're, we're being a little generous here because we believe that that trade offer from the Rangers came down in January. Uh, it was before the trade deadline for sure. It wasn't like a last minute thing. Um <laughs> We're extending the criteria a little bit here, but if we go a little more recent, I think there's a serious case to be made for giving up a second round pick and Jason Dickinson only to get Riley Stillman in return. Like I think I think that's up there. I don't I don't think it's as detrimental in terms of where this franchise is at, um, of the Miller extension, obviously, but you gave up an asset. Like you, you gave up an asset to get out of what you thought was some bad money, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not here to say that the Dickinson contract was great by any means, but you gave up an asset to get out of that, and you require a defenseman who just hasn't been able to stick. Like I'm not going to start slagging on Riley Stillman, but I just like you look at that. You gave up an asset to acquire Riley Stillman and to get out of that contract. And again, I just like that's one move that I think you could make a legitimate case and say, you know what, it would have been nice to um, not have to do that. Well, that move was made when the Canucks thought they were a contending team for the playoffs. And that's that's the problem is if I would take things, if I could take one massive thing back, it would be that all the moves point you in the same direction. Because has this not been the problem for the Vancouver Canucks for the last 10 years of take three steps down this path, but then turn left and take two down this way, then turn around and take a step back and then take a step forward. And it's just like, stay on the same path. I think if you could change or take back one thing from all this year, I would say I'd take back all the the steps towards being a contender, right? I would take steps directly towards being in a rebuild or being in a retool, whatever you want to call it. Because this management group, though they've talked about a retool a lot this year, I don't think they were preaching about a retool slash rebuild at the start of the season or in the off season when they're out there signing McKayev and extending JT Miller. I don't think they were doing that. I think they were their thoughts were that this team was going to contend for a playoff spot. And a lot of people did. We thought it was, uh, we, we gave them a pretty decent chance. If things fell in the right direction, we said they'd be a playoff team, right? If you got Thatcher Demko back to being one of the top goalies and, and, you know, having maybe not top of the league save percentage of five on five, but even just like up there in the top 10, this Canucks team would be very different. If the penalty kill improved with Ilya Mikheyev coming into the mix and, you know, different coaching staff and all this stuff, like we, we gave them a, a half decent chance of being a playoff team. If things went their direction, Things have not gone that direction. It feels like if you would have made all those moves in that way, you would have been okay to kind of see this team actually taking steps in one direction instead of just a bunch of different steps and, you know, building here, retooling here, uh, brick after brick here. We're going for the playoffs, like all this stuff. If you just took steps down the same path, it's going to be incredibly good for the Canucks moving forward here. So you hope that they're on that track now, but I still don't really know if that's where they're at. 